everyone welcome back to the be more podcast where we inspire you all to be a little bit more of every role within the salesforce slack tableau and MuleSoft ecosystem today we are talking about the slack ecosystem in particular and our session today is going to be focused on be more slack chapter leader so i am joined today by ankit so are you able to introduce yourself for our audience please yeah sure uh, Don. first of all nice to meet you and thank you for inviting me for this one uh, so my name is ankit Thakur. currently i'm based out of milton kings uk my roots belongs or i basically hails from uh, gujarat india yeah. um, and i'm here in uk for almost three years uh, talking about my IT experience, I have a 12 years of IT experience, where specifically in Salesforce ecosystem, it, it's, it has been seven years now. Uh -huh. So that's me, and now playing a role of a solution architect uh, for one of the enterprise clients. So for today's session, we're going to be exploring in particular your role as a Slack chapter leader. So are you able to introduce that to our audience? Maybe they, they haven't heard of that, they're not sure what that means. Yeah, sure. So the people who are uh, in the Salesforce Wuhan are the community from long time. They mm. know we, we are having a different communities running over. And after the several acquisition from Salesforce, uh, after that, we are having you now Tableau Millsoft included. And yeah. the latest one is the Slack as well. Yeah. So I applied for the Slack community chapter leader role for Milton Kings. Uh, I was working for one of the enterprise client where I got the opportunity to be an uh, admin on a Slack workspace. And that inspired me. I worked there for a longer period. And the way you are collaborating with others and you are you are having those fun and things things like that, the emojis and so many cool stuff yeah. that you can do it in Slack, that inspired me like, you. Th this is far better than what we're using on a daily basis. It's not mm. just a collaboration tool. We can do more than that. And uh, I was exploring more on the Slack at that time. So I applied for the Slack community chapter leader uh, for Milton Keynes in 2022 uh, post uh, that uh, I started for this uh, role where I'm hosting the events physically and virtually, physically mostly in Milton Keynes and virtually globally anyone can join where you will be able to learn more around the Slack features and the use cases and the functionality, the integration stuff and things like that. So mm -hmm. it will be more to know how, how we can use Slack better and increase your own productivity. I'm certainly an advocate for some of those features in, in Slack as well, being a Slack user myself and um, also Slack certified too. So I'm wondering, have you gone on to kind of explore the Slack certification paths as well? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, Slack certifications I have explored as well, and I've started uh, going through the admin uh, mm -hmm. prep course that uh, we are having. So if you are uh, a you know partner with Salesforce, yeah, uh, we are having a partner community group as well, where uh, earlier the alliances and the partnership team was uh, giving you the vouchers for getting enrolled for this particular course. At the same yeah. time, you will be able to get the voucher for uh, Slack certifications there mm -hmm. are three certifications available right now the admin developer and the consultant one well it's great that you're taking advantage of that because that's how i got into slack myself i, I took oh, advantage okay. like as a sales course partner joined the slack group and then took advantage of the free course and uh, the exam attempt with yeah. the course as well and then became a slack certified admin and then perhaps progressed in my mind, progressed to then become a, a SAC certified consultant as well. So the yeah. exam is great. And I think it you naturally learn new things and about new features of SAC that you perhaps haven't explored or, or discovered yourself yet. As a SAC chapter leader, how do you interact with other roles or other people in the ecosystem? I'm assuming it kind of spans perhaps different relationships of different purposes, like maybe reaching out to speakers or organizing the agenda or trying to find a sponsor and sorting out the food and drink and things like that. Yes. What, what type of people do you work with to pull all of those things together? 
Yeah, so the things is like as you mentioned, like definitely I'm I'm closely working with the head of the Slack community, Checker Pros. Everyone mm-hmm. knows if you are, if you are in that ecosystem or even the part of a Slack community, then you must know him. So I, I mostly interact with him uh, for any of the events. I will ask him to do the proofreading about the event agenda or the event descriptions and other things that I'm posting. At the same time, as you said, like we need to you know interact with the different speakers invite them for the events as well so few of the events say for example we hosted the slack canvas event and for that i invited jason pop who was uh, working in slack itself and i met him during the um, slack frontier event so mm-hmm. i was having some personal connection with him as well outside mm-hmm. this so yeah. i invited him and he said yes for the event and we did the slack canvas you need to be coordinated with the sponsors to for the locations or the place but but they're allowing us to host the events at the same time yes arranging the food and drink and other things and now slack is allowing us to host the event in the salesforce tower as well mm-hmm. so i'm i'm planning for one uh, workshop uh, there if, if possible where i can have a co-host event with the london slack community chapter and uh, we can at that uh, workshop there where people can come and uh, try to do some hands on as well so i Myself attended the London chapter kickoff meeting a couple of months ago. Yeah, really so, launched one, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So it's great to to get involved and also respect people on the other side of the curtain, like being somebody that's very invested in Salesforce. Always curious to know what Slack has to offer. I'm just curious now, right? As a Salesforce community group leader, I always yeah. have a problem of finding speakers mm-hmm. and trying to decide what topics my group want to hear about. Do you have similar challenges as well? We are having the different workflows created for the mm. uh, Slack community chapter leader in Slack community itself, where yeah. you can submit that uh, and you will be able to get the speaker around the globe. There might be challenges that you can't host the in-person event in, in case mm. a speaker is uh, not uh, within UK. But yeah. yeah, there are workflows and you will get the speaker that way as well. And now we are having a Slack community chapter leader channels as well there. So you can communicate with them. People are, you know, trying to be speaker in each other's events as well. So that mm. way we are also trying to overcome this kind of a challenges. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, if, if no one is coming, then yes, myself will become a speaker and whatever I can uh, try <laughs> to, uh, you know, explain people that I can mm. and have a self-awareness and things like that. So, yeah. That way, I, I will also get to learn more, you know, because otherwise yeah. I need to be dependent on the speaker itself. Uh, but if I am doing the deep dive, I, I will learn more uh, in that case. So that is another thing. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, it's it's good to hear that you aren't the only people with those challenges and I'm really yeah, yeah, definitely really kind of excited about how the SAP team is drinking their own champagne you know with it sounds like workflows to help solve that problem and, and bring people together that sounds great okay. so maybe in the future I might be running a session on how to get Slack certified do you think yeah, yeah, definitely. No pressure. We wanted to do that. I, I wanted to do that. But at the same time, what happens right now, those vouchers and other things are not coming up from Slack itself. Uh, so I thought like once it is again up and someone is coming up in that role, the alliance is in partnership role. There's no point doing it if the program is on a bit of a pause or hiatus. Yeah. You want to do it when it's up and running and available to people. So that makes sense. So next question now, but how do you fit this in? Like you're working full time and, and doing this as well right how do you fit everything in how do you juggle and prioritize things yeah so i would say like it it uh, comes with uh, your own interest and if you have that motivation to do something else mm. out of your work because this way you will be able to constantly give something back to the community at the same time try to have more networking because of this kind of a situation you will learn from many of the other people as well like how they deal with this kind of thing because being like i i know you are also leading the salesforce architect yeah. community you are hosting those events as well mm. so it is it is like doing something additional out of the work which yeah. which will feel good from within yes that that is that is something i i, I thoroughly enjoy and that's the reason i opted for this one so Thinking about this now as somebody that's listening to this podcast, and maybe they're feeling a little bit inspired and they're perhaps 
considering becoming a Slack chapter leader themselves. Thinking about that person, what tips or advice would you give to them if they were looking to start out? So I would say like tips wise, um, you know, first uh, try to, uh, you know, go through or explore Slack more before you mm. yourself, uh, you know, applying for the Slack community chapter leader. We are having a, uh, you know, if, if you go to the Slack uh, a certified or uh, place there, then you can do mm-hmm. the badges the way you're doing the badges on the trailhead or yeah. do similar thing for the MuleSoft or the Tableau as well. Uh, if you go, then you will be able to do the some badges for Slack. Try to explore some more. Be a user. Come on the Slack community as, as mm-hmm. a user first. Then you can go for the uh, chapter leader uh, application process and uh, yeah. other things like that. Apply for that. You will be, you know, go through that process where from the Slack community, uh, they will be arranging one interview for you. First of all, you need to fill out that application form. After that, they will assess and do the other things and then they will reach out and have your interview. Well, that sounds great. And I'm loving the, the subtle differences between this program and the Salesforce one because I'm, I'm picking up on, on some differences. So, oh, is, it, is it different than on a Salesforce side? Like, yeah, sales side, you don't have the interview. It's not kind of mm-hmm. interview, but they will ask you certain questions like why you wanted to become this. You need to justify uh, your role and uh, justify yeah. why you wanted to do it on specific location. That That, that is the only case. Like It's it's not like a, our, our uh, job interview kind of a thing, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's a yeah, normal yeah. conversation kind of a thing. And do you think maybe somebody being like a stack champion in their own uh, organizational company like could potentially suit this? this role as well, right? If they're advocating for Slack like within their own organization, do you think that's potentially somebody that can go on to start their own group? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If you are a kind of a super user or expert or doing mm. the workspace admin role within Slack, then eventually you will be, you know, attracted towards this. And then if you yeah. get more about this, that something like that is also going on where you can apply mm. for a chapter leader. And definitely I've seen some of the people started uh, so many chapters like that in India, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's great. The more Slack applicants we have, the the better and the easier it becomes. Yeah, I would say like it. It's not uh, uh, that much mature, and you will get that much audience the way we are getting it in Salesforce for sure. Mm. It's still in in the initial phase where, say, if a hundred people has uh, registered for your event, might be you get. 50% or 60% attendance on a given day. That might be the possibility. But if, when, when we are having the Salesforce events uh, getting organized, you will get a better crowd and more crowd. I can certainly speak. There are, there are some parallels again here that I'm picking up on. Mm-hmm. As running the, the London Architect community group for Salesforce, we do see sometimes up to 50% dropout rate. So mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's particularly unusual, but I, I think Obviously, the nature of our group is maybe a little bit bigger than in your group because there's just more features, functionality when you can do Salesforce, right? Slack, Slack is coming up with more features nowadays. So, say, like mm. Slack says earlier, now recently Slack list, Slack canvas as well. So, yeah. this kind of features now, just the day before yesterday or something like that, now we are having the schedules signed on the threads as well. So, this kind of was little, little wins and the quick uh, turnaround time that they are coming up with on the features. It will definitely drive more adoption towards Slack. And I love the kind of culture that Slack embraces around those changes because, like, I certainly, as a Slack user, and it will tick everybody out there, we yeah. will flash feedback in any channel. It will raise a case with the team, and yeah. the team are really responsive, friendly, and, and helpful. And I did that just yesterday to give them some feedback. And mm-hmm. they're now considering my suggestion for their longer term roadmap. So I have yeah, the power. Yeah, yeah as a user to just be like, oh, actually, can you do this? And you, yeah. you will feel empowered. Like I'm having a, you know, direct inputs to be available on, on the product roadmap mm. uh, and the product that I love. So that is always, uh, you know, very good. Yeah, yeah exactly. So thinking about this now, how long have you been a Slack, a Slack chapter leader for? It's been almost now one and a half or uh, for seventh or eighth quarter now. Yeah. Okay, so thinking about your time mm-hmm. during that during that period, if you were to start again, is there anything mm-hmm. you would change or tweak, or would you 
do it all the same because it's made you the, the stat chapter leader that you are now. No, I, I would say like I need to restart or, uh, you know, rethink in that perspective. Like I was doing more virtual uh, events mm. to drive the more members within building his chapter yeah. initially. But now, now it is a time like uh, I'm about to reach at least 100 members within this uh, chapter, community chapter. So now I'm, I'm planning to do more um, you know, in-person event or the co-hosted event. I also, you know, expand my network where I will get more speakers and things like that. So that will drive more adoption towards Slack as well. At the same time, it will give me more avenues to represent some of the other features in the Slack related titles. Mm. I wanted to do in-person events. I wanted to do workshops as well. And hence on workshops and being a developer or architect mind, if you're keeping that into mind, Yes, I wanted to go for like some of the custom things and building your own applications and things like that. This kind of topics will drive more right adoption. Like people will start thinking what uh, they can do in Slack uh, apart from doing the collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And I think personally, community group, maybe seeing it from both angles, I think in person, you kind of inspire that interaction more and you get yeah. more people kind of talking up and sharing their experiences right yeah yeah super valuable for not only you because you're learning at the same time as everyone else right but the group yeah. too yeah, yeah obviously obviously yeah. Yeah. because in-person events even you know give the chance people to do the networking and things like mm. that yeah yeah exactly so thinking about this now as somebody that's perhaps thinking about becoming a slack chapter leader what skills attributes would you use to kind of describe that ideal candidate? Yeah, I would say like you need to be curious, but at the same time, you should have some patience as well to grow the <laughs> community yeah. chapter because the only problem that I can see, you should not give up very easily if, if you're not getting that right um, response in back, like people are not joining and things like mm -hmm. that. So you, you definitely need some patience and curiosity to come up with some more features and uh, different ideas to uh, you know continue grow yourself and grow more awareness about Slack as well. So mm. yeah, these are the two qualities okay, definitely you need. And yeah, some of the things like I, I personally myself is very extrovert, so I have a yeah. better network as well because you speak a lot, you will be able to mingle with more people. So the situation is, I, I would say like uh, yeah, try to build your network, try to grow along with other people as well that is that is what if you if you have that this kind of qualities then yeah definitely go for those like community chapter awesome man i think that's solid advice there thinking about this now as an opportunity to kind of demyth or, or debuff something about running a slack chapter is there anything that people often say oh do you do this because you must do because you run a Slack chapter or kind of any misconception or perhaps something you just like an opportunity to just clarify about what it's really like in reality compared to maybe what people think when you, when you say that to them. Yeah, so definitely I would say like uh, if you're doing something, you need to definitely devote your time towards that mm. or think around that, like uh, how you will uh, drive more adoption and things like that specifically within slack uh, ecosystem because as i said like you won't get the similar thing what what you are having on the mature communities of a salesforce mulesoft and things like that yeah so in that case it, it's not that easy uh at the same time but now nowadays the situation is if, if if you are a Slack community chapter leader, uh, you will get some more opportunities. I would give my example because I, I got a chance to, you know, be a speaker on the uh, World Tour London last year, mm -hmm. not, not this year, but last year I was presenting Slack community or I was presenting Slack community there and I was, I got a chance to, uh, you know, speak around the AI adoption and other things that Slack is doing. So I, I, I took uh, that opportunity and, uh, you know, you, you feel good apart from yeah. that. Misconception will be obviously there, like uh, it's so easy, and because of that, you will get the perk and things like that. Yeah, perk will be always there as a leader, and uh, you will get some of the other news or other things mm. before it will come to the market, or you will get a chance to participate into some of the items where, like, uh, some POCs are going on or they need the feedback on certain features. So you will get to participate into that 
as well so i personally love it uh, yeah. you need to devote your time so if you have time yeah. then yeah uh, not, nothing is coming uh, you know free of cost you you need to invest your time there mm. sure. yeah invest your time and also your learning as well because you're yes. continuously learning right yes yeah it's true and i i love adding about auto too um and the fact that it wasn't this year it was last because i know there's somebody else this year from the london chapter that was talking jake. world tour yeah. so yeah yeah hey, jake was there this yeah. time and last year i got a chance um uh, and um there were other people as well like um you anyway know like um like Todd was there from Salesforce perspective. Shudhir mm-hmm. was there. Uh, Sudhir Kulkarni from MuleSoft perspective. Yeah. So yes. yeah, I was also getting chance to meet these people because I was presenting or I was a speaker there. So mm-hmm. it that that will expand your network. You will grow, learn from them as well. Now, if I need something, I I, I will definitely have one connection. If if something is coming in MuleSoft, if there is something coming up on you know the Salesforce related things, there are plenty of connection, but. then i got one another connection to reach out to or having my doubts resolved and things like that just one thing about the world so i don't know how you feel about this mm-hmm. but i wish they would just take the grabber the slack grabber the easier yeah. because yes. i have to do that thing 15 times to yes. get some yes. salt you know much yeah. better at writing a workflow than i am grabbing socks we're we're bringing the session for today to a close but before we do go Mm-hmm. If somebody's listening to this and maybe they want to be a speaker or they want to learn more, what's a way for them to connect with you? They can reach out to me on Slack community. That would be my preference because yeah. like they they will <laughs> come on Slack community as well and try to see what are the different kind of events happening. Try to join more groups, not only Milton Keynes. We are having variety of topics and the uh, things going on in Slack. I'm available on LinkedIn as well. Ankit Art is my um, URL part of the mm-hmm. LinkedIn. I will. Ankit Tot Chivran is my Twitter handle as well. If someone wants to connect, yeah, anytime uh, available, feel free yeah. to send me the request on LinkedIn, and happy to chat. Yeah, awesome. Well, that that's great, and I'm glad how you gave Slack as your preferred option. I feel like that was the right answer. Yes, because yeah, that way you know people will try to understand and try to use Slack as mm. well. Because yeah, Slack community yeah. is hosted again on there itself, so you will get that flavor if if you are not having Slack at your you know wherever you are working, yeah. whatever client. If they are not using Slack and they are using something else, this way you will be able to get the flavor of Slack as well. Yeah, definitely, and I think again, kind of embracing that chain of thought. Really, there are some amazing Slack communities out there in terms of that you've got, for example, the Flownatic for sales yes. flow. You've got. the ohana architecture one yes space. and yeah. also yeah exactly the architecture ohana one and you've got the slack community one as well so you've yeah. got lots of different workspaces to to join explore and and learn so i think that's a you, great even I'm, i'm active on the other communities as well like the, if you mm-hmm. take the example of lewis or gdg events and things mm-hmm. like that so there are you know workspaces available for that as well so you can be part of that even i have joined one of the aws solution architect uh, channel as uh, sorry was space as well where you can yeah. learn because i wanted to be up here for that and the people are having the learning material and the source and mm. you you will get the study buddy as well there so yeah. you never know so it, it's always good well that that's great and i think that just illustrates the power of slack as a tool right connecting yeah. all, all of these people together to talk about the same topic or or learn about the same things and if anyone wants to you know uh, discuss mm-hmm. anything how to apply or how, what what needs to be done i will be happy to help there as well awesome thanks thanks tom